Hey guys, welcome back to the unboxing dito. Just a couple of days ago, in unbox and review natin si Black Shark 4. Ngayon naman, we will put it to our gaming test para matry natin kung paano siya mag-perform sa lahat ng paborito niyong mobile games. So sit back and get ready for our Black Shark 4 Ultimate Gaming Test. <music> Before we proceed, don't forget to subscribe to my channel for more unboxing and tech reviews. It's just one click pero malaking tulong talaga sa paglago ng channel ko. What better way to try out the physical triggers than playing first person shooter games? So for our first game, let's play Call of Duty Mobile. For me, yung physical gaming triggers niya ang nag-classify kay Black Shark 4 as a legit gaming phone. And with FPS games like CODM, dito mo mamamaximize yung feature na yan. Mas madali kasi maglaro dahil yung thumbs mo, focus na lang sa movement and panning. Then, yung index finger mo, nasa physical triggers naman. So, mas madali bumarel. Sana yan lang din. Pero, once you get the hang of it, mas may improve yung gameplay mo. Napansin ko din na mas okay yung haptics ng mga gaming phones compared to mid-range or even flagship phones. Iba kasi pag may X-axis linear vibration motor ka na similar to the ones implemented with Xbox and Playstation controllers. Yung weight niya is 210 grams. And surprisingly, hindi siya masyadong nakakangawit sa kamay even even for extended hours of gaming. After 3 multiplayer games and 1 battle royal match, let us check yung temperature. For the CPU temp, it's 48 degrees and yung battery, 42.8. Para sa akin, mas madali maglaro ng mga FPS games pag may physical triggers. Actually, mas nag-improve yung kill-death ratio ko sa CODM dahil dito. Let's see kung ganun din yung impact niya with PUBG Mobile. Okay, for PUBG Mobile, eto naman yung mga settings. For the graphics, nakaset tayo at Ultra HD. And sa frame rate, naka-Ultra din tayo. Naka-on din yung other options like anti-aliasing saka shadows. Maganda yung sound quality ng dual stereo speakers niya. Bukod sa maganda yung tunog, hindi siya sabog pakinggan kahit naka max volume ka. I find it very useful sa PUBG kasi mapapakinggan mo talaga yung footsteps ng kalaban pag malapit sila sa'yo. Sayang nga lang kasi hindi siya front firing and there are times na kailangan kong i-adjust yung grip ko para hindi ko siya matakpan. May 3.5mm audio jack din siya sa baba which is a must have for gamers kasi hindi talaga may iwasan na magkaroon ng slight delay when using bluetooth earphones. Yung mga earphones naman na may low latency will cost you around 3 to 5k and that might be expensive for some. Dito sa PUBG, mas ma-appreciate mo yung 720Hz niya na touch sampling rate. Kasi this game is fast-paced and dapat coordinated din yung mga movements niyo. I'd say na na-improve niya tremendously yung experience ko in both CODM and PUBG dahil sa mga physical triggers. After playing two classic games, yung CPU temp is 47.3 and yung battery 40.8 degrees. Okay, next game na tayo. Yung next game natin is Asphalt 9 which has a ton of nitro-induced car collisions and heavy visual effects. Let's see kung paano i-handle ni Black Shark 4 si Asphalt 9. Yung screen natin is a 6.67 inch E4 AMOLED screen with a peak brightness of 1,300 nits. Its display size is the smallest among gaming phones. Pero mas malaki naman siya sa average size ng mga regular phones. Hindi naman siya major issue for me. Dahil when it comes to gaming, a bigger screen is not always better. Kasi kapag smaller yung screen nyo and same lang sila ng screen resolution, in result, mas magiging sharper yung images nya. This phone has a 144Hz screen refresh rate which is perfect for this game kasi mas smooth yung galaw ng lahat ng mga visual animations. Ang daming sabay-sabay nangyayari dito sa game na to pero wala kang mapapansin na stutters or screen freezing. Saktong-sakto lang din yung color saturation niya. May mga ibang AMOLED screens kasi na oversaturated yung mga colors pero with the Black Shark 4, balanced lang yung dating niya. After 5 races sa Asphalt 9 yung CPU temp is 44.2 and yung battery 40.3 degrees. Next game is for our MOBA fans out there. Unahin natin yung favorite game ko, si League of Legends Wild Rift. For League of Legends Wild Rift, ito naman yung mga settings natin. For the graphic settings, nakaset tayo sa custom to manually select yung mga preferred settings natin. Nakaset tayo at 60 for the frame rate since hindi pa available si 90 and 120. Nakaset naman tayo at ultra for the graphics quality and high for effects quality and resolution. Nakawan din yung other options like post-processing, interface animations, floating text, and character inking. One of the best features 
ng phone na to is the ultra fast 120 watt charging speed and it claims that in 17 minutes mapo full charge na yung phone nyo from zero battery pero based sa charge test natin naging 30 minutes yung charging time nya pero to be fair okay na okay pa rin naman yun by far ito na yung may fastest charging speed sa lahat ng mga phones na na-unbox natin sa channel 4500 mAh yung capacity nya which is my least favorite thing about this phone for me it's really not enough lalo na kung heavy user ka solid yung 120 watt charging speed pero pag lagi kang on the go hindi ka naman makakapag charge throughout the day so kung hindi mo imomonitor yung battery percentage mo baka malobat ka pero if you spend most of your time sa bahay okay lang din naman for the battery consumption naman yung standard na 18 to 20 minute game for wild drift will consume you about 2 to 3 percent battery lang on max settings and 70 percent brightness wala din ako na experience na lags even with team fights with other phones kasi minsan nag fps drop pag may mga clashes pero this phone handled the game flawlessly after two ranked games sa wild drift yung cpu temp 49.2 and yung battery 41.2 okay next game naman tayo mobile legends naman yung laruin natin para makita natin kung paano ba siya mag perform and tingnan din natin kung may connectivity issues ba siya while playing for mobile legends eto naman yung mga settings natin for the graphics since bago pa lang si bs4 wala pa tayong ultra setting so for now high pa lang yung gagamitin natin nakuhan din yung other options like outline shadow hd mode saka hfr mode wala ako na experience na connectivity issues habang naglalaro both wifi and LTE steady na green yung ping ko. This is also a 5G capable phone. So if you are using a 5G SIM, for sure wala kang magiging problem sa connection. Since kaka-release lang niya, wala pang ultra settings pero ma-optimize din yan soon for sure kaya abang-abang lang tayo. Enable naman yung HFR mode kaya the game will still run smoothly even with team fights. Similar sa Wild Rift, yung battery consumption niya is at 2 to 3 percent per game. So not bad na kahit maglaro ka ng matagal. You could also assign your physical triggers with this game. Pero mas prefer ko gamitin yung on-screen buttons Kaya default settings na lang yung ginamit ko Kung sanay ka naman sa gaming phones Yung weight niya na 210 grams might not bother you Unless compact phone yung gamit mo dati After 2 rank games sa Mobile Legends Yung CPU temp is 46.5 degrees And yung battery 40.1 So far sa 5 games na nilaro ko Wala akong na-experience na problem The games run smoothly And no connectivity issues were encountered So for our final game Let's put the Black Shark 4 sa isa sa pinakamabigat na game In terms of graphics requirements. Let's play Genshin Impact. For Genshin Impact, eto naman yung mga settings natin. For the graphics quality, naka-custom tayo. Kasi change natin yung 30fps into 60fps. Nakaset tayo at high for other custom options like render resolution, shadow quality, visual effects, and SFX quality. Nakahayas naman tayo for environmental detail and extreme for motion blur. Pareho sila ng chipset ni Redmi K40. Parehong naka Snapdragon 870 and Adreno 650. Nung naglaro ako nito using si my Redmi K40 to be honest may mga times na naka-experience ako ng mini stutters while gaming especially pag nagpapan ako ng camera pero this time very smooth yung 30 minutes ko na paglalaro akala ko nga mahihirapan siya dito sa Genshin Impact kasi nung nag to benchmark test ako may throttling issue tayo na nakita eh 200k points kasi yung binaba niya pero ngayon okay na okay naman hopefully through updates ma-optimize nila yung phone para maiwasan natin yun yung throttling kasi yung pinakamalakas maka-apekto sa performance ng phone pag uminit siya masyado, yung phone na mismo yung magpapababa ng performance niya to lower the temperature. Medyo naging mainit siya sa kamay dahil nakamax settings tayo. Pero the good thing is that walang performance drop ako na nakita kahit ganun. Okay, after 30 minutes of playing Genshin Impact, yung CPU temperature is 66.3 degrees and yung battery 46.6. So here are my final thoughts after playing 6 games with our Black Shark 4. Overall, satisfied naman ako sa performance niya. Yung pinakamalaking concern sa akin about this phone is the throttling. Pero dahil wala nga ako na experience na pagbaba ng performance, hindi siya naging big deal for me. So to be clear, meron tayong throttling issue na nakita sa benchmark test. Pero yung actual impact niya sa gameplay, wala naman ako nakita. Yung performance niya sa gaming phone sa ganitong price, sobrang panalo ka na lalo na kung FPS games talaga yung lagi mong nilalaro. Kasi dyan mo talaga mapapakinabangan yung physical triggers niya. So what do you guys think? Yung Black Shark 4 na ba yung gaming phone para sa'yo? If you have questions and suggestions for our next video, hit me up in the comments down below and I'll make sure to reply. So that's the end of our video and I hope you guys liked it. Thumbs is a plus, subs is a must. I'm the unboxing Tito and I will see you next time.